Welcome. Today is Monday, and on this special day, we have the 28th of September, we have the Saint Saint Lawrence Ruiz and Companion Martyrs. Saint Lawrence uh, died in 1630, was a devoted husband and a devoted father of three in the Philippines. After having been wrongfully accused of murder, he fled with Christian missionaries to Japan, where he was tortured and killed for the faith. He died professing, and these words I quote, I shall die for God, and for him I will give many thousands of lives if I had them. And so we remember St. Lawrence Ruiz today in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And by the way, he's the first canonized saint of the Philippines. Grant us, we pray, Lord God, the same perseverance shown by your martyr, St. Lawrence Ruiz, and his companions in serving you and their neighbor, since those persecuted for the sake of righteousness are blessed in your kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Today we're going to be looking at the Gospel of Luke, now chapter 46 through 50. And Jesus makes it clear that his disciples are to serve others, especially the poor and helpless. In the synoptics, children are symbols of uh, little ones of society. And Jesus teaches tolerance towards all, even the imperfectly motivated. And so let us listen. Luke's Gospel, chapter 9, verses 46 to 50. An argument arose among the disciples about which of them was the greatest. Jesus, Jesus realized the intention of their hearts and took a child and placed it by his side and said to them, Whoever receives this child in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. For the one who was least among all of you is the one who is the greatest. Then John said in reply, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent them, because he does not follow in our company. Jesus said to him, Do not prevent him, for whoever is not against you is for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. The Lord briefly describes those who compose the people of God by saying that every whoever um, welcomes a child welcomes him. Children are the least important members of the society of Jesus' day. Jesus indicates that whoever is prepared to spend his life or her life, um, and so uh, spending it in service, um, and helping people who do not matter much in the eyes of the world um, is serving him and also serving the Father, consciously or not. So they are all people of God. The category people of God places emphasis less on superficial similarities and differences than on really real points of unity among the people on earth. It points to a community, a community of faith that appears fragmented along uh, denominational lines but is really deeply united in spirit. So the most authentic urge uh, deep within people is not towards division but towards unity. And um, I can say... Um, Unity is very important um, because of the fact is, where is our unity? Our unity is in the person of Jesus Christ. He is the key. He is um, the source. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. So it's in Christ that we find our unity. And it's there that we have to strive to focus um, on our oneness of belief. Um, and um, focusing on that oneness of belief is focusing on Jesus, his love, his mercy, and what he taught. 
and to remain faithful to those realities um, is so, so important in our day because there's those out there who don't want us to remain faithful to those realities. Mm -hmm. And you have to realize that practicing those realities is important, um, and yet at the same time, um, we have uh, what we call dogmas. Those are unchangeable realities. They're always the same. Um, and it's um, sometimes how we practice those dogmas. Um, the practice is changed. So we are called, for instance, to, um, to fast um, and abstain um, on Fridays. Um, and that was the law all the way up till Vatican II. And then they changed it and didn't say, we're getting rid of it. They said, you pick the day so that you're not doing it under pain of sin because that's a forced reality of following Jesus' word that his disciples will fast and abstain. We're to choose the day that we're going to be doing it. And, but it was never taken away. So the dogmas that come from Scripture are still held. Um, it's um, the practice oftentimes that's changed. Mm -hmm. So um, that's where we then begin to look at and say Christ needs to be our center. He needs to be the center of who we are, what we are, what we say, what we do, um, and the mercy that follows. Uh, but mercy cannot follow to the extent that um, it then breaks the commandments and breaks the scripture uh, because there's held the dogma. Mm -hmm. Well, I see three different messages in this particular gospel, and it's only, what, four verses long? Okay. And one of them talking about, you know, who's the greatest? And they're having an argument about that. And then we have Jesus answering that by bringing a child in and saying, this is who you need to protect. Be like a child, but protect that innocence of that child. And if you receive a child, then you're receiving, you know, you're basically you're receiving me. And then he goes into casting out demons. There's a lot of different stuff in there. Can you weave all those messages together? I think it's hard because of the fact that when we look at the reality of what um, Jesus is saying at the time and then the gospel writer, mm -hmm. the gospel writer is really striving to uh, put um, realities together in Jesus' life that we should be following. Okay. So sometimes um, they're separate, um, but they can be joined together, um, um, and we begin to join them together from the fact that um, those who compose um, the essence of believing in Jesus and believing in God, um, that they have to uh, be as humble okay. um, as children mm -hmm. and also as acceptance being as children. Um, pretty much a child will accept anyone who's willing to pick him up. It yeah, um, doesn't have to be a parent. That's good. And, and I like to think that, you know, the child, the innocence of a child, they're such pure, open vessels that we need, really need to safeguard that and we need to protect that. Um, how many children right now are being led into situations that are really going to be harmful for them and in many ways spiritually but physically and emotionally because parents or adults in their lives are not, are not looking at the child as to be protected. And that's something we have to be concerned with. And I think some of that has to do with because mm -hmm. so many adults are focusing on themselves right. and not focusing on their children. Um, and, and we also be, live in a very busy mm -hmm. world. So it takes importance to be like a child, yes. to care for child. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Goodbye.